Ross 128 is an unremarkable red dwarf with the constellation of Virgo, somewhere near the star of Beta Virginis, and it's too faint to be seen with the unaided eye. A confirmed Earth-like exoplanet, likely rocky, orbits close to the inner habitable zone of the star, which is located some 11 light years from Earth, which makes it one of the 20 closest stars known. Hi everyone, Vake here, and in today's video we return to our exoplanet series, to one of our neighbourhood stars, and an intriguing world that could be very similar to Earth. So let's get to it. The 12th closest stellar system to the solar system, this low mass star has a stellar classification of M4 main sequence, which places it in the middle range of the category of stars known as red dwarfs. With about 18% of the mass of the Sun and 20% of its radius, it generates energy so slowly that it only has 0.033% of the Sun's visible luminosity. However, most of the energy being radiated by the star is in the infrared band, with a bolometric luminosity equal to almost 0.37% of the solar output, which although still small, is over 10 times more than meets the eye, so to speak. We've talked about potential habitability of red dwarf stars before on this channel, and many red dwarf stars like Proxima Centauri and Trappist-1 are actually prone to releasing potentially deadly flares caused by powerful magnetic fields. Now this star, Ross 128, is not flare free, but there is some evidence that the star's stellar wind has dipped somewhat and lowered the frequency of flares at this point in its life cycle. Don't forget to check out these videos if you haven't already and are you interested in red dwarf habitability, but it's thought that some red dwarfs, like Ross 128, are not as volatile and flare prone as others. Ross 128's galactic orbit will bring the star closer to the solar system in the future, and the nearest approach will occur in about 71,000 years, when it will come within 6.23 light years, meaning in the far future it could become quite a key player in our civilization much like Barnard's star is today, but hopefully by then, with colonists. Ross 128b, the exoplanet in orbit around the star, is actually the nearest exoplanet around a relatively quiet red dwarf, and so it's considered one of the best candidates for habitability. The planet itself is only 35% more massive than Earth, and receives only 38% more starlight, and it's expected to be a temperature suitable for liquid water to exist on parts of the surface if of course it has an atmosphere, which given its higher than earth mass, does seem fairly likely to be the case, that it could have held on to something. The only two rocky bodies in our solar system that have thick atmospheres, Earth and Venus for example, are both smaller than this world, so again it seems fairly likely that it could hold on to at least something. The planet unfortunately though, does not transit its host star from our point of view, which historically makes atmospheric characterization very difficult but recently this has become possible with the construction of larger telescopes like James Webb. Due to its discovery by the radial velocity method, rather than the transit method, the only known physical parameter for Ross 128b is its minimum possible mass. Unfortunately, Ross 128b's radius, and therefore its density, is unknown as no transits of the planet will have been observed. The radius could be variable, for a highly iron composition, which would not be too dissimilar to Mercury, would put the planet at around 0.5 Earth radii, whereas a pure hydrogen helium composition would put it at around 3 Earth radii, but both are obviously the extremes, so you might expect to find it somewhere in between these two figures. A more plausible Earth-like composition, the planet would actually need to be about 1.1 Earth radii, and this would give the planet a gravitational pull of around 1.12 times that of the Earth. So if there is intelligent life here, on this planet, it's slightly more difficult for them to lift off using rockets to get into space. Ross 128b is calculated to have a temperature similar to that of the Earth, and the planet's potential equilibrium temperature could vary depending on its albedo, or the portion of light that's reflected instead of absorbed. If it were like Earth, the planet would have an equilibrium temperature of around 280 Kelvin, or 7 degrees Celsius, which is about 8 Kelvins lower than the Earth's average temperature of 15. It must be stressed, however, that the actual temperature of Ross 128b of course depends on yet unknown atmospheric parameters, if indeed it has atmosphere at all. So there is potential for life, but as yet it remains just that. The small red dwarf star known as Ross 128 is thought to have an age of around 9.45 billion years, and this if we compare to the Sun is almost double its age, the Sun's age of course is 4.5 billion years. In essence, it means that it's half the temperature and over twice the age, so if there is life there, it's certainly had plenty of time to evolve. It's such a shame so far we've not managed to sample the atmospheric gases, but of course we'll see. 
ROS-128B's orbital period lasts about 9.9 .9 days, with a semi-major axis of around 0.04 astronomical units. Compared this to Earth's average distance for the Sun of 149 million kilometres, ROS-128B in essence orbits about 20 times closer to its star than Earth. At that close distance from its host star again, as is so often the case in red dwarf systems with habitable planets, the planet is more likely than not tidally locked, meaning that one side of the planet would have eternal daylight and the other would be in darkness, and because of this ROS-128b is likely more prone to water loss, particularly on the side directly facing the star. The planet is not confirmed to be orbiting exactly within the habitable zone, it actually appears to reside within the inner edge, as it receives approximately 38% more sunlight than Earth. Here we see a diagram of the potential habitable zone of ROS-128, and we see immediately that the habitable zone stretches from 0.06 to 0.08 astronomical units, and of course this puts the planet slightly inside the habitable zone. But we must remember that these calculations are designed for Earth-like planets, and the possibility that this planet is tidally locked are high. It does remain possible depending on what kind of world this is, that although not perhaps all of the world is habitable, crucially parts of it could be, much like our own Earth in many ways, with very unhabitable places like the Atacama Desert in Chile, or perhaps the Sub-Sahara. As we mentioned, it's not yet possible to determine if ROS-128b has an atmosphere because it doesn't transit the star. That said, as long as the liquids on the surface haven't boiled away, then there does remain this possibility for life in the areas of habitability. So shall we say it's not a great candidate for Earth-like conditions, but we certainly shouldn't rule it out either. When the James Webb Space Telescope and upcoming massive ground-based telescopes, like the 30-meter telescope and the European Extremely Large Telescope, are able to analyse the atmosphere of the planet, it may be found that biosignatures are in the atmosphere, which include chemicals like oxygen and ozone, or even methane, that are created by biological processes. Like with many mysteries of the universe, I guess with this planet we'll just have to wait and see. ROS-128 is a tiny red dwarf star just 11 light years from Earth. Like many red dwarfs, it radiates much of its energy in the infrared rather than visible light. At least twice the age of the Sun, there is not an unviable planet in orbit around it that, albeit a long shot, could potentially harbour liquid water, and therefore potentially life. An orbit of just 9.9 .9 days means that this planet has seen many years of evolution in its mother star, and it's past what was probably a lot more violent history than it is today. The star is now one of the more tranquil and passive red dwarf stars we know of. Let's hope in the not too distant future when telescopes improve and gaze upon this system, that it will join other local stars in being one of our very first planned destinations for galaxial colonisation. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider joining the channel and becoming a member, or alternatively buy me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. And if you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. It could be your idea next week that shows up. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well. I'll see you on the next one.